Welcome again to another uh, profile. Great guest, good friend, and uh, you may have recognized him in uniform a few years ago. Uh, he was the uh, chief of police here at the city of Joliet. Today, however, he is uh, transformed into a CEO. Yes, the chief operating officer of Big Brothers Big Sisters. Is that true or is that wrong? Yeah, that's true, isn't it? Well, oh, that's the one of Big Sisters. I always forget this. This is Big Sisters, Big Brothers of Will and Grundy County. Will and Grundy. That's yeah. It. Yes. So we're going to do that in just a moment. But you know, I always like to do this because it's so true. Get yourself down here to Al's Steakhouse for lunch or dinner. What a great place. The iconic restaurant of Joliet is yours. It's here at Jefferson Hamas. Beautiful dining area. Great private rooms for uh, your meetings, for your showers. This is the time, you know. I know you ladies out there are planning showers, so make sure that Al Steakhouse is at least on your list to check out. Talk to George, and uh, he'll show you uh, the rooms. And of course, they've got the great um, buffet on Sundays, and you're going to enjoy great lunches and fabulous dinners. Al Steakhouse, Jefferson and Hamas here in Joliet, Illinois. We're going to talk about, among other things, Bowl for Kids' Sake. It's an annual, I don't know, how many years have they been doing that? Oh, forever. Uh, <laughs> you know, since it's been in Joliet, so 25, 26 yeah. years at least. Yeah. And, yeah. and you were not in the very beginning. No, I, you I was. you were just a little kid. Well, though. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I did participate many, many years on a team from the Joliet Police yeah. Department, though. Yeah. So. I remember interviewing you as uh, as the chief. Yes. Let's tell. Let's share the folks a little bit about uh, that. Uh, your history as police chief, and uh, a little bit about your family as well. Sure. You know, uh, Richard. Uh, very proud to be from this town, Joliet. Uh, very very lucky to spend my whole career as a police officer in this town, and uh, managed to uh, work my way up through the ranks. Uh, you know, from a patrolman all, all the way to the chief of police. So it was a, a wonderful, wonderful ride. Yeah, you know, there's, um, I don't think there's that many departments uh, that promote that individual from inside. They usually find somebody from Poughkeepsie or right. <laughs> somewhere to put them in charge as a police chief. Right. And uh, I've often wondered, you know, why, why is that? Why don't they just promote from inside? You know, and, and again, I, uh, I, I agree with you. I think it's the way to go, especially in a large department like Joliet, mm -hmm. you know, one of the largest in the state uh, for municipal police departments. So I think it's important that uh, you, you show the members of the department, if you work hard and you set your yeah. goals to, uh, to lead that department, to be one of the leaders of that department, that uh, you can be chief, you can be a commander, you can be a leader. Yeah, it's, uh, once you get to that position, um, it's, really a, it's really a lot of administration. You're at that desk, you're at that office, and you're counting nickels and you know yeah. all that kind of you, stuff. You hit, you hit it right on the head. <laughs> the uh, the gun belt goes away, and the that pen the pen away. is the uh, tool yeah, at that yeah, point. And uh, sure. yeah, it's uh, you're an administrator at that yeah, point. Tell me, right tell me about it. your family. Well, you know, I've got a, a absolutely wonderful family. My wife Melissa will be married uh, 30 years coming up this year, so which is amazing. I've got a daughter Katie, who's 26. She teaches uh, second grade at Troy. Uh, right here in town, Shore yeah, Joliet. Sure. She's right in Heritage Trail, right off yeah. Hobart Road is her school. Yeah. Very proud of her. I've got a 22-year-old daughter who is a senior at Marquette. And I've got a 19-year-old daughter who is a freshman at Joliet Junior College. <laughs> so uh, three girls. Amazing. Yeah. And so now you've got the time to, you know, just kind of watch over the family and relax and take it easy. Um, we'll spend a little bit of time because we both shared earlier that we've had a couple of um, health issues. <laughs> yes, we have. Uh, 2015 was not one of the great years for either one of us, but also for you. Right, right. Um, you know, we just uh, had some uh, problems, some back and hip problems, and they all kind of hit at once. Yeah. And a couple surgeries uh, early January for me, but I'm in the road to recovery and uh, kind of had to take a month off work at Big Brothers, but uh, I'm back now yeah. and uh, anxious to uh, hit the ground running. Yeah, you know, so, it's interesting. You never want to judge a book by its cover because you look so healthy. You look like you can, you can run that a 5K right now uh, or be out there with your buddy Terry Darcy uh, playing the back nine at uh, Inwood. It, it's going to be easier this year, by the way. They've cut down like 35 trees out there. It's, I, I, it's I, sad. But, I saw that. So yeah. uh, it is sad. With the, every, every time you drive by, they got one more tree they're cutting down with that uh, disease business out there. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I like that because those, I've been hitting those trees for years right. and now they're gone. 
and I'm, sh I'm sure they replace them with something like this, so yeah. it'll be okay for it'd me. Be much better for me, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. so. <laughs> well, tell me a little bit, how in the world and, and why did you get involved with uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters? Well, you know, even while I was a uh, police officer and then as the police chief, uh, I took a role with Big Brothers Big Sisters because it was, it was something I, I took to heart. Um, as chief of police, I'll never forget, I was at a neighborhood meeting. And after the meeting, an uh, elderly uh, lady was in the back of the room, and she's waving to me, and I'm going, oh, I'm going to get it, because I know what that wave yeah. means, you yeah. know. And she goes, Chief, you know, you know what you need to do? And I, I said, no, ma'am, what, what do I need to do? And she goes, it's these kids. It's these kids. And I said, I, said, I, I understand, you know, kids can be a lot of problems. She goes, no. She goes, you have to give these kids hope. And that stuck with me, you know, ever since yeah. that day is, is, you know, how do we give kids hope, and how do we help them? And it's... Uh, it's really stuck with me. And, uh, you know, I, I retired at, at a young age, I consider, you know, a little over 50. Um, did 28 plus years on the police department. You know, don't regret a minute of it and absolutely loved it. Uh, loved my city. Um, I was approached by uh, some board members from Big Brothers and Big Sisters, and they asked if I'd be interested in taking over Big Brothers Big Sisters. Uh, Lisa Lass, who did a wonderful job here, had moved on to the county, the Child Advocacy Center, where she's doing an absolutely wonderful job now. Um, you know, those big footsteps to fill, you know, but uh, when I sat down with them, uh, I was familiar with the organization. I was already a mentor. Uh, I had a young student at Juliet Central who I was mentoring uh, through Big Brothers and Big Sisters, and uh, I firmly believed it. And after sitting down with the board and uh, they offered me the job, I, I accepted it. it. was something I, of course, I went home to my wife yeah. and explained it to her. Yeah, and, <laughs> and she said, well, you're taking it. So, oh, right. so when uh, right. mom says, yeah. you know, and, and I'm smart enough to know that uh, she usually knows what yeah. I want. And uh, right. she's very, very supportive. Before we continue with yeah. uh, Big Brothers and Big Sisters of uh, Will and Grundy County, as you're sharing this, the beginnings of uh, your involvement with Big Brothers Big Sisters, a thought occurred to me with all these shootings going on in Chicago, is there an organization like Big Brothers Big Sisters in Englewood? I mean, there's a lost generation among these kids who are just, you know, shooting each other, killing each other, but there's little kids that can be saved. Is there an out? Do there, there you have any f uh, familiarity yes, with that? Yes, there, there is a Big Brothers and Big Sisters out of Chicago. Um, I don't know their involvement in those neighborhoods, so yeah. I, I really can't speak of it. And, and as a whole, I think we've got to look at it. You hit it right in the head, a lost generation. And, and I think that's in any big city now, um, even in parts of Joliet. You know, we really need to, to see what we can do as a society. Uh, you know, you can't do the same things over and over again. You right. know what I mean? Expect something, you know, different to change. And so I, I think we really need to look into uh, mentoring, uh, giving back. Um, no child has any say-so where they're born. No child has any say-so who their parents are. You know, if your mom or dad is an alcoholic or a drug addict or, or incarcerated, that's, you, have, you have nothing to do with that. But maybe other people like me or, or people in this town or Will in Grundy County can give back to help these kids. Because if we don't, you know, what future does that leave for those children? Well, we're going to put a phone number up there um, and, a, uh, and a website. Because during this conversation, you're listening to Mike share about Big Brothers Big Sisters. Maybe it's your time. Maybe this is your moment to say yes to Big Brothers Big Sisters. Now, first of all, how many, uh, you've got volunteers, yes. different categories, different, right. you know, there's needs all over the place. Why don't you right. explain some of the openings you have and, and how many volunteers you have? Sure. And then what does it take? And you know, it can be some hesitation out there. Wait a minute, I don't know if I'm too young. I don't know if I'm too old. I don't know if they need women. I don't know. You know all these questions that people may have out there. And what you're going to do, you're going to solve all those questions. Exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try. Yeah. Um, I guess the first uh, thing I'd like to talk about is, is the Big Brothers Big Sisters program that everyone's aware of. It is, is basically a, a mother or a father will come in with their young child, you know, and uh, and say, hey, you know, we need help with this young child. Uh, this child needs a, a big brother or a big sister. So that, that's the program I was aware of. So what we do is we, we professionally match this child with a big brother, which is a volunteer from the community, from Will, from Grundy, uh, you know, Joliet, anywhere mm -hmm. in the area where people come forward. And 
you know, and people always ask me, you know, hey, but what do I have to offer anyone? Right. Well, you have everything to offer is the way I look at it. You know, most of the people uh, are either, you know, a su successful mom or dad. My, my wife is a perfect example. She's like, honey, what can, what can I teach them? Well, let me see. You raised three girls. You, you've been side by side with me. You've been an RN for 28 years. You know, you have a lot to offer people. And, and I say that to everyone in this town, and it doesn't matter if you're a, if you're a man who's going to work every day, you know, picking up the garbage, uh, you're a custodian, uh, you're a CEO of some big company, doesn't matter. That, that kid wants, just like what we talked about, they want hope, they want a companion, they want someone to show them the right way to do things. So I guess what I'm saying is everyone has something to offer big brothers. Um, come on in. What we're asking you to do is come in for an initial interview, and then you'll be paired up. And what we're asking for is an hour and a half every other week. So three hours a month, you know, um, most of us can fit that into our schedule. I would think so, three yeah. hours a month. Now, what is this Mentor 2? What is that? Mentor 2.0, um, something I'm very proud of. Uh, I am a mentor in Mentor 2.0. Um, it's a wonderful program. This is our uh, second year of the program, started last year, where we uh, mentor children from Joliet West and Joliet Central. Uh, right now we have about 175 kids in the program. All these kids choose, chose to be in this program. And what we do is we match them up with a mentor from town, like myself. Um, I have a wonderful young man, Kenny, who wants to be a, a police officer. That was his goal. So it was an easy match for our social workers to do. Uh, they matched me with Kenny. So we met, we meet once a month in person uh, at Joliet Central. We have dinner. We meet as a group. So there's about 75 of us to do this and the whole goal is to prepare these kids for college so last year we started with 75 we got another 100 kids this year to come forward so right now we have 75 juniors 100 sophomores and next year we'll have another sophomore class coming forward so we'll have sophomores juniors and seniors at west and central next year the whole the whole purpose of the program is to get these kids to college show them that there's so much more out there for them the majority of these kids no one in their families has ever been to college before so this is a new, new experience for them. We partnered with uh, Joliet Township, Cheryl McCarthy, and, and the people at, at Joliet Township have been fantastic. Um, great partners to deal with in this. And again, the whole idea is to mentor these children, um, young men, young women, and to get them to college to improve their role in our society and improve Joliet. Yeah. You know? it, a thought occurred to me, um, and that's a great program, it's probably impacting on the grades at the high school. I think I would so. Think as well. I, I would think you know, so as well. Um, there are individuals out there, kids out there, who for, for a variety of reasons are not college bound. Right. Is there uh, an association, a working relationship with the trade unions, with uh, the carpenters, the plumbers, the pipe fitters, the IBEW folks? And if there isn't, there should be. You're, you're, you're a mind reader because yeah. uh, that, that is something that I really want to get going. I, I, I need to reach out to our unions and hopefully they hear this and yeah. see this. And that's the next type of program we need to do. Um, many of the kids that are going to this program also have, have shown an interest, maybe not in college, but into going into trades. And, and we promote that wholly too because, I mean, I think you know as well as I do, you know, when, when stuff breaks down around the house, if you don't know what to do, you know, and who do you call? You call your friend, hey, do you have a good plumber? Do you have a right. good electrician? How about a carpenter for me? Uh, all, those all, things are so yeah. valuable. Plus, their training programs. I, I went through the um, two of the, the pipe fitters, and what's the one right there on uh, off of uh, Larkin uh, by the American Legion? I, I know where you're Coast. talking there. Uh, the, they have unbelievable yeah. training, and while you're training, you get paid. Yeah. <laughs> They're paying you as an apprentice, uh, so it's fabulous program. So hopefully if you are a union member, you talk to your BA, you talk to your, you know, your local and get them in contact with, uh, with Mike Traft. A number will be up there either at the end of the show or, and the, and the website as well. Thanks Richard. Yeah. Let, let's talk about the fun stuff. Yeah. Um, the, the bowling, uh, bowl for kids sake, uh, been going on for a long time. What we want you to do is save the date. There's two different types of people I think you're looking for here. Those are who are going to participate, but you can also just come and watch and be a, a part of it. Right, be a, be a sponsor. You know, uh, come get a hold of us if you want to sponsor an event, if you want to make a donation to Big Brothers Big Sisters. We're, we're self-funded. Um, we don't take any government funds. We don't have that. We're, we're self-funded. So uh, 
everything we uh, get. You're probably better off not taking uh, the government fund because they're not know, coming in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, with what they're going through right now, exactly. So, you know, we're, we're a self-funded agency, and this is our biggest fundraiser of the year. It has been forever. And, uh, you know, we have uh, every weekend in April is uh, where we're going to be. We're going to be in Joliet. We're going to be in Crest Hill, Plainfield, Morris. You know, we try to get the whole area that we cover, Grundy County and Will County, and we make it a fun event for people to come out. Uh, we have a cops versus fire, you know, all the different oh, cops uh, yeah. event. We have that in Lockport every year, which is so well attended. And uh, I'm going to hit that hard with my connections in the uh, law enforcement and fire department, and we're going to try to make that the biggest event we've ever had. Um, and then all, just all the other ones. It's, it's really a fun day, and, it, and it's for the kids, you know, and that's where the money yeah. goes. And we're going to have... We're going to have a lot of our littles at these events so people can meet them. And it's a way for the people to see, hey, you know, not only are we here bowling, but maybe maybe I do have time to help this kid. Yeah. You know? yeah. And uh, that, that's the good part of it. The, the bowling alleys are Learway Lanes and Learway Road, uh, Echo Bowling Lanes and Bedford Road in Morris, and the Town and Country Lanes, just a few blocks away from Al Steak House, Strike and Spare in Lockport, and uh, Crest Hill Lanes in Crest Hill and Plainfield Lanes. That's right off of uh, Route 30 there, yeah. Yeah, right across from where all the birds uh, have their besting yeah, areas. Exactly, right by the rookery. Yeah, and yeah. the administrative offices of the Plainfield uh, High School. Sounds like fun. Um, are there any other fundraisers throughout the year? You know, we, we're constantly, uh, we're very, very lucky. Uh, I was just talking to the staff at Big Brothers today. It's uh, People are always reaching out to us, uh, and they want to do something for Big Brothers and Big Sisters, and that, that means a lot lot to me and I again I credit a lot to Lisa Lass for that that uh, she put us on the map I, I'd like to say uh, you know uh, let people know about Big Brothers and Big Sisters and we're a good organization uh, just this afternoon I'm going to meet with someone who wants to do a uh, fundraiser uh, for us in the summer and uh, we do those we have uh, like a, what we do with a lot of celebrity bartending events where oh, yeah. local celebrities uh, mayors and such come out and they raise funds for us and we've got a couple of those coming up and uh, but it's just, it's really good. Uh, we'll have a golf outing this summer. A law firm in town here has got a hold of me, asked if uh, we'd be interested in being a recipient of their uh, golf outing, and uh, I said, absolutely. So, so what a great community. Uh, you know, not only Joliet, but this whole area has, has really reached out. Is that, a, is that a confirmed golf outing? Is that confirmed? It, it will be confirmed, and I'll let you know exactly when we have a date. Okay, and, but and let's law firm what and, law firm is that? Uh, Frank Cerveniak. Okay. What a great man. I mean, Frank is... He, uh, he gets out in the community a lot. And it's one of the things uh, when I talk to uh, non for profits oftentimes um, we don't ask for you know who is this, who are the sponsors who are the folks who you know your your buddy Terry Darcy I mean Terry's in so many different things and outreaches you know it, and and Terry's been a big sponsor of course I'm sure and, and like you said guys like Frank. Uh, Mr. Vaniak, who sponsors so many things too, is, is just another great man in this community. Yeah. And uh, we are so lucky here in Joliet in this area that, that we have the businessmen and just the people in general that are willing to give yeah. back to their town. In tough times. In very Challenging tough times. Challenging times for yes. a whole variety of businesses, but yet they, they are still uh, uh, helping out. And that's, that's a message that, uh, uh, that I don't say enough. I, we're all shopping, doing stuff online, but we ought to be taking a look at the brick and mortar stores that are owned by folks right here in Joliet. Al Steakhouse is an example, are family owned, and there are many other restaurants that are family owned and businesses that are family owned. When we talked about the trades, when you call up the plumber and you call up the electrician, these are all, many of these are locally owned firms and companies, and we ought to support our local businesses in Will and Grundy County. Uh, but particularly here in Will County, because uh, JCTV is, um, well, of course, you can hear it and see it on YouTube. Did you know that, by the way, that we, you can catch it on AT&T and the upper channels, Channel 6 on Comcast, as well as uh, YouTube? And uh, we'll give that information to you at the end of the interview as well. Um, any future plans for Big Brothers, Big Sisters? You, you know, uh, yeah, a couple of things I'd like to talk about. Richard is, uh, you know, we're going to be hiring another social worker uh, real soon here. We're meeting uh, next week. Uh, we have interviews set up. Real excited about it because uh, we have a backlog right now of littles. Yeah. You know, and it's uh, the only way to, uh, to get there is to hire more staff and uh, work hard and to uh, match these people up. So we seem to, to be stuck between 60 and 100 kids that are unmatched. Uh, it seems like we could get it down to 60, and then uh, maybe we're getting the word out too much, you know. But that's what we're here for, though. And, and then the kids come 
come back in. And, and what we really need to do is to match these kids, you know, with mentors, yeah. with bigs. And, uh, you know, shortly after taking over, we were at, at an event at Undisputed Strength here in Joliet on Essington Road. Uh, they were doing a, uh, a nice event for us, showing kids, showing littles how to exercise correctly, how to eat yeah. correctly. It was a wonderful event. And, and again, a, a mom came up to me afterwards and said, you know, you really, you, you really are doing great work here, but you, you've got to help me out. And, I, and again, you said, you know, how can I help you, ma'am? My, my son has been on your waiting list for over a year for a big. So, you know, welcome to the world, Mike Trafton, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. boy, oh boy. And, uh, you know, it left me teary-eyed. You know, it, here's a mom doing the best she can for her son. You know, and uh, she had the courage to come forward and say, hey, I, I need some help with my son. And then uh, to not be able to provide that help hurts. You know, it does. And uh, there are so many talented people out here, like we talked about earlier. So just, just come in for the interview is yeah. what I say and see what we're all about and, and, and see if it works for you. And I think you'd be pleasantly surprised uh, if you talk to people who are uh, big brothers, you talk to people who are mentors, I think they like the program more than the kids many times. Uh, in our Mentor 2.0 program, we often meet afterwards as a group of uh, adults, and, and we talk about how much we're enjoying the program, how much we're enjoying helping the youngsters, you know, and uh, maybe getting them to college, maybe getting them to trade school, maybe just improving their lives. And to be able to be a part of that, that's very rewarding. That's great. Yeah. Mike Trafton, what we're going to do right now is um, we're going to go through the front doors of uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Will and Grundy County. There, there it is right there. And we're going to go through those doors and uh, take a tour of the facility so that uh, you'll know the location. If uh, this is an opportunity for you to volunteer, to be a mentor, uh, to be a sponsor, you're going to get to uh, know the building as well as the uh, CEO and the staff will probably be there as well. Let me give you a high five. There you go. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we're all finished here, but let's take the tour, shall we? We'll see you next time. Take care. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you, Richard. Very much. Thank take you. Care. Good to see you. Good to see you. We're in the lobby of Big Brothers and Big Sisters, uh, 417 Taylor, right here in Joliet. And Carrie is hard at work. Uh, I'm sure she's working on some matches for our bigs and littles, or maybe just returning some phone calls for people who've uh, called earlier today. So. And here's our lovely boardroom. Uh, we have our uh, bi-monthly meetings here and we uh, use this room uh, whenever we need to meet. And uh, we use it also, a lot of other uh, organizations in town use this uh, wonderful facility as well. Hi, uh, now we're in my office here at Big Brothers Big Sisters. Uh, right now we're just in our office area where uh, all our employees work and a uh, little uh, conference table for people as well. Hi everyone, this is Courtney here, and Courtney's in charge of our Mentor 2.0 program, and she's doing a wonderful job, and she's really overseeing uh, the uh, interns and other things we do in the office as well, so she does tremendous work for us. And this is just uh, all of our toys and, and coloring books and blankets we have donated by the wonderful people in the area. Um, we give these to the kids that come in, to our littles, uh, little giveaways, uh, nice things, and these are all donated items. Uh, people of Joliet, uh, Will County, Grundy County have been so good to us. Uh, we really appreciate all the donations. Mm -hmm. 